First, I want to talk about the Jasmine Barnes story, and I want to talk about why it blew up and became a thing. And also, I want to weigh in on a few things, and then I just want to get off this story. I don't really like tragedies. So I believe she was seven years old in Houston, Texas, but you could check me on that. Uh, her age might have been different. I'm almost positive she was seven, though. She was shot and murdered uh, in the back of a car. Really sad stuff. Uh, it was some sort of drive-by shooting hit, uh, situation. And a young girl was murdered. It's horrible. I wish that it was something that didn't happen all the time. But if you really look at crime statistics and stuff going on in a lot of neighborhoods, there's way too many murders going on. And there's also way too many young kids being murdered. Um, it's really bad stuff. And it's, it's awful that it happened. Uh, but the reason that this story blew up is because liberal and progressive media and race activists like Sean King and uh, Bishop Talbert Swan, or I don't even know who this guy is, but all these people who, you know, their whole life is basically like uh, white, they don't like white people or they're very anti-white and they pretend like they're pro-black. I'm all for pro-black, um, but I just think these people are a little phony. Anyway, they thought the shooter was white because the sketch and the uh, eyewitness of the shooter, they thought it, he was white. So everyone got behind it only because uh, they thought the shooter was white. Uh, the positives of this are they actually solved the murder and uh, CNN credited Sean King w with that. So out of all this, what some would say negative and what definitely is negative as far as like the murder of a kid, uh, there is a positive that they did actually find the shooter, but liberal, progressive, and Black Lives Matter, like race activists, whatever you want to call them, media was stunned to find out that the shooter was a, a black guy, and it was like two people were the suspects. Um, you know, I don't know for sure. I'm obviously not a police officer. I, the investigations, I, I would say, pro there's probably some things that they have to do. All I'm saying is the media hyperanalyzes everything. People freak out, and then sometimes two weeks later, the whole story changes like this. Um, but it sh it shows a lot of light and it sheds a lot of light from both sides uh, of what's going on. The first thing I want to say is, uh, you know, progressive media such as the Young Turks and all, all of these people who hyper covered the story. The only reason they covered the story, like I said, was because they thought the shooter was white. What's really sad about that is I don't mind that they covered the, sh the story because I'm not somebody who wants to shield white murderers or, you know, say a mass shooter or something like have at it. You know, I'm not... I'm not sensitive. I don't, I don't care if people bring race and gender into the discussion. I think it should be in the discussion, to be honest. It's not the whole discussion, but most murders are committed by men. So I, I think it is a gender discussion. And if you, I'm going to get into the statistics later, it does seem to be a trend. So I, I'm not above it, but they, um, you know, they only cover the white situations. Uh, what's wrong about that and what's statistically and actually unhelpful to the black community about that is that uh, I do think that black lives matter. I think that all lives matter. I know that you can't say that phrase, which is like a basic phrase, like all lives matter. I, you know, like literally all lives matter to me. It's, you know, I get that they've branded the black lives matter. And if you say a statement that's true, that they don't want you to say they're mad. But anyway, I do think that Black Lives Matter, and the reason I don't like these race activists is because they focus on like the smallest percentage of what's actually killing black people. If you really statistically look at it, I mean, black on black crime is way more than white on black crime. Black on black crime is significantly higher than police crime. I think police police murdering black people is like 0.01% or something. Like it's so minute. I'm not saying that you can't try to solve those murders and crimes, but if you really want to help all black lives, you need to look at diet, exercise, you need to look at heart disease, you need to look at opioid drug overdoses, and of course, murder uh, of within the, the own race. These are all real things. So I say look at all of them because I want to solve every black life. I want to, But these race activists, they, they don't want to do that. And the real tragedy is, besides the fact that they're lying about like 99.9% .9 of the reason that we have, you know, young black kids dying every single day, they never talk about Chicago, they never talk about a lot of inner cities where it's literally almost, if not already worse than Afghanistan and Iraq, where people are being murdered every single weekend. But you'll never hear the Young Turks talk about it, or Sean King talk about it, or CNN, and they don't want to cover it because there's no racial political angle to it. It's black people murdering other black people in the inner cities. So there's no anti-Republican narrative. There's no anti-white narrative. So they, they don't want to touch it. 
I, I'm not saying that I'm not willing to have a discussion about what other people are doing and such. Like I said, I'm not sensitive. I'm not a crybaby, but this is why the mainstream media doesn't want to cover it. It's not because they actually want to save lives or they don't want to touch that angle um, of the story. And I heard all the people on both sides. I've grown up myself. Um, I've always been an activist for equality. I've done prison reform like essays where I've spent, you know, like 20 pages researching and I understand uh, the societal aspects of it. I really do. I understand the financial aspects of it. I understand the prison system and how it's corrupt and it is run by people who possibly want people in the prisons. I understand all those angles to it. So I'm not just somebody who says blame those people, blame those people. I'm not ignorant. I'm not a fool. Uh, um, but the thing is, I did also look at the statistics recently and as much as Sean King runs his mouth and Bishop Talbert Swan runs his mouth and progressive young Turks run their mouth, what they don't want to tell you is, uh, I looked at the FBI statistics from a few years ago, out of all of the murders and homicides, um, 50, over 50% 50 of them are committed by African Americans or the black population, whatever the FBI determines as black or white, I don't know what their shade of skin you know, references, but you're talking about 12% of the population committing over 50% of the murders. And if you really want to get down to it, it's mostly not black women. So you could even say it's seven to 8% of the population committing over 50% of the murders. That's just true. And I'm not, I'm not saying stop the press or be racist or stop and frisk. Like I'm not advocating for all these things. But what I am saying is why are they allowed to always talk about blame white people, this, that, this, that. They only care about the murder if it's a white person but they don't want to have a full circle discussion about what's truly going on. And in my opinion, it's not helping anybody. It's not helping white people. It's not helping black people. It's not helping Americans. It's not helping any race, religion, and gender because they're misframing the thing. It's like you're blaming this when this is really the majority of the problem. So if you're looking at 0.1% of the murders, I'm not a super fan of police. I know they could be corrupt. I know there's good police officers. I'm not like a, I'm not one of those Republican shills. It's like the police could never do harm. Like I know that they mess up sometimes. I know there's some bad people in there, but police murders is just not one of the big things in the black community. It's like literally 0.1% or 0.01%. It's so irrelevant on a big scale. Um, and, and what really bothers me about this, and I know maybe this is controversial to talk about, but I don't really care because I know it's true. Uh, I think not just the black community, women, white people, whatever you want to say, there's a brainwash in the culture that liberal society is trying to tell the black community that that's their culture. And it's really not their culture. I've, I've studied as far back as Booker T. Washington, Marcus Garvey. I mean, you want to talk about a good black leader. I'm not saying everything he did was perfect, but look up Marcus Garvey. Check out Check out some of the stuff he was saying. He was talking about how once they can't enf enslave you physically, they'll try to enslave you mentally. Because if they can enslave you mentally, then you can enslave yourself. You know, they can convince you to turn against yourself. It's what uh, a lot of people did. I mean, you go up to Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, like I said, I'm not agreeing with maybe all of their stances and such, but these were highly intelligent, highly uh, critical thinking skill type people. Fast forward to hip hop culture. I'm a big hip hop artist and hip hop fan. Um, Hip-hop started as a dance party. It started as b-boying, breakdancing, good vibes, Africa Gambada, Africa Bombada, excuse me, DJ Cool Herc, KRS-One. These people never talked about killing themselves, killing each other, and selling drugs all the time. Like, this wasn't hip-hop culture. Like, this wasn't black culture. This was, like, implanted into the black community. And if you really want to do your research, and I know a lot of black activists know about this, you could look at who brought the crack and cocaine to the streets of Los Angeles and other inner cities. I mean, there's a lot of government operations that was bringing cocaine and drugs into the black community. I mean, if you want to really research some stuff, if you haven't already, look into Freeway Ricky Ross. I mean, the guy made millions of dollars and, you know, he taught himself how to read in prison. He's one of the biggest drug dealers ever. Taught himself how to read in prison, realized that there was a loophole in his, con in his situation and he got out of jail really good guy. I'm not saying his whole life was perfect, but I really like Freeway Ricky Ross, the real Ricky Ross. Uh, and he knows he dealt drugs to, you know, government agents at a certain time, or he at least alleges that. So a lot of sketchy stuff. I'm, I'm not, I'm not making justification for other people. But what I am saying is black culture 
was never meant to be what hip hop culture is now. It's a total brainwashing. It's blame everybody else, do drugs, sell drugs, kill your brothers and sisters and your community members, make excuses. And if you don't do that now, I'm not talking about always, they'll make up names for you. You know, they'll call you not just the black community, Hispanics as well, some white people that, you know, it goes all, but it's like, if you're like trying to go to school or you speak really good English, in the white community, no one really cares. In the Asian community, that's what they, uh, you know, they strive for. They, they come here with no money, you know what I'm saying? No connections, they don't even speak English. And they're very, I'm not saying everybody, but the Asian, you know, mentality is like, work really hard, uh, no excuses, go be a doctor or a lawyer. Like that's what my parents wanted me to do. I'm not saying it's just Asians, but it's like, do you know what I'm saying, work really hard and do something productive. It's a lot of families in the black community, not always, but a lot of times in the mainstream, in the liberal mainstream, if you do that, they call you all sorts of racial slurs, like you're not allowed to have a good vocab, like you're not allowed to be highly educated, like you're not allowed to be successful or thought provoking. That's why what Kanye West is doing is so important. He's saying black people don't have to be Democrats and people are ready to, you know what I'm saying, cut his head off for saying that, but He's totally right. The black community has been absolutely manipulated, programmed, brainwashed, hijacked by liberal media. And the Young Turks and Sean King and Bishop Talbert Swan and all this stuff um, are just a product of that. And I don't say this to be mean or blame, and I, I don't talk about this stuff very often, but I'm saying it because it's true. I'm saying it's because it's helpful. And I say it to everybody, even I barely ever talk about certain communities in specific, but I always preach self-accountability, self-awareness, digging within yourself and being the best you can be like that's what i say to everyone but if i was to say that to the black community uh liberal activists and probably most of them would be white people i mean rarely ever like uh it's anytime anyone gets mad at me i'm not saying it matters it, i'm i'm good uh you know with people it's like white liberals who are like 50 years old from san francisco who are like the most mad i'm like bro this is not even your it's not even your situation anyway I say this because if I said that, they would say you you don't understand this. You don't you can't you can't pre preach them self awareness, self accountability. You can't tell them to to do that because this that it's like they're blocking wisdom and knowledge from the black community and acting like they're helping. It's exactly what Malcolm X warned about. They're wolves in sheep's clothing, where they say, "No, you're mine. We own the black community. We own the brains of the black community. No, you're not allowed to help them and teach them wisdom and knowledge. That's racist. That's sexist. That's you don't understand ec economic, socioeconomic. It's like, no, you don't understand brainwashing and pop propaganda, and you don't understand culture. You know, there is a difference in culture. The black culture in America has been programmed to think it's a certain way, and you know, God forbid they let me on any of these hip hop shows. I'll, I would love to talk to Sway or Charlemagne the God or Vlad TV, all of these hip hop. I would love to have a great conversation with them, but they probably won't let me on because, you know, I'll say too much truth and then I'll get kicked out. But, you know, that's how that culture is programmed to be. That's why the culture conversation, and, and it's all wrong. It's, it's wrong for them. It's wrong for everybody. Uh, it's seeping all over the place. But the American culture, we have certain issues, but there's certain culture, freedom of speech, this, that, and then there's terrible health culture that we have. I'm not afraid to look at American culture and realize we need to improve. But then you look at like cultures in the Middle East that liberals are saying, no, 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 we're all the, this, that. It's like, you don't understand, like the culture in the Middle East, they don't want you there if you're gay. So if you're an LGBT liberal in San Francisco, and you're shilling for, uh, you know, Pakistan and Iran and Saudi Arabia, what you don't understand is our culture is different from their culture. I'm not any better or worse than someone from Saudi Arabia or Iran, but you're not allowed to live there. So if, if you really wanna know are our cultures equal, you could make an argument for which one's better or worse, but they're not the same. They're just not. So, you know, it's like these are the tough conversations people really don't wanna have, but it's like, no, not all the, not all cultures are the same. And I'm, it's not all people are bad or certain races or religions or this or that, like those are all discussions other people can have, but there are different cultures. And when it comes to liberal culture, it's a toxic culture and it's seeping into, they've kind of hijacked black culture in a way that is not really empowering. And that's why I say that. And before I wanna end, I wanna be completely honest. Liberal and progressive media would have never covered the J Jasmine Barnes situation if they didn't think the shooter was white. It's sad. But then on, on the flip side, just to be honest, 
conservative media would have never really cared about it if it wasn't white. You see what I'm saying? It's like everyone's caught in their little identity politics game. They cared about it because they thought the shooter was white. Now conservatives cared about it because the shooter wasn't white. And now I'm talking about it to point out that they're, everyone's acting kind of ridiculous. Um, and, and like I always say, I think there's flaws on both sides of the political debate. But to me, the liberal media is just so terrible and horrible. It's like they don't care about anything. Like Chicago, this stuff happens every week. And, I, and I'm not, I don't cover tragedies. I only wanted to talk about this from an outside perspective and move on. I hate talking about tragedies, but they talk about tragedies every day but they won't touch this stuff because they don't actually want to help. They want to just rub ointment over the cut and say we solved the problem, but they, they really don't. They make everything worse. And uh, I would love to have a real conversation about all this stuff, but the the culture and the you know closed-mindedness is, is so closed that um, even having a very calm, rational conversation like this is considered almost taboo, if not completely taboo. Luckily, the internet exists and, and we have good people, but I'm, I'm definitely... I'm gonna be at the Blexit March in a, what is it, Candace Owens' this thing in um, January 20th to have a hip hop panel discussion. I'm excited about that with some black conservatives. I'm the moderator and I want to, I'm really excited about that because I get to talk about hip hop saved my life. I love hip hop culture. I love and respect black culture. I appreciate what everybody's brought to the table here. And I, it's, I think hip hop culture saved my life, but I understand that how hip hop started and how it's evolved it wasn't how it started. And, and some things are great. You know, we have our J. Coles, Kendrick Lamars, and uh, really good people, but then we have a lot of trash. And I'm excited to talk about that stuff. But overall, as we go into the next story and then question and answer at the end, Jasmine Barnes, it's a total tragedy. Um, as God bless her family and anyone involved. Um, but sadly, this type of stuff only gets brought to light when there's a political and racial narrative behind it. And sometimes vice versa as well.